Welcome to the second episode of Indian MMA Origin Stories which is an interview series through which we at Locker Room try to cover the origin stories of Indian MMA gyms, fight teams, promotions, events and what not. This is Ranjit Ravindran here and in the second episode we will be featuring Siddharth Singh who is the man behind Cross Train Fight Club. Here is his story. 2012 is when you started Cross Train, right? Yeah. So like what made you start that whole thing like what was the spark that you had so i i mean i started with combat sports really early man uh, i went to doon school in dehradun and there boxing was a sport and my brother was already a boxer in school so if your elder brother in a boarding school is playing a sport and it's a sport that not many, not many people want to play which is boxing you get pushed into it you know so i got pushed into boxing and then i did that for 6 years and then i went to the uk i was pursuing my masters degree in economics so i got my economics honors and there i started i tried to find a boxing gym i couldn't find one so i found a muay thai gym in, instead and the guy said uh, boxing you want to do boxing yes yeah. he said yeah. it was muay thai so i never kicked in my life so I learned how to kick it was fun and then after muay thai it was bjj then wrestling and then i had a 9 to 5 job for about 5 years in london and uh, the only thing i used to look forward to was finishing work so i could go and train uh muay thai that's the that was the highlight of the day that oh today i need to go train nothing about the job or anything else it was just training so that was my you know that's when i really fell in love with the sport and um, every time i would come home and delhi's been home uh, every every time i would come home i would want to find an mma place to train and i could never find one there was always karate guys who would claiming to teach mma and that was an mma at all so so then i thought one day you know sitting there this me at 24 25 thinking you know oh this is the time and i was watching a lot of joe rogan at the time and i was massively influenced by a lot of people who were saying oh you should you know that was the entrepreneurial phase like after the economic crisis the recession that hit 2008 after that everyone's like start something on your own do do something and control your destiny and all that So yeah, I, I got sold on that uh, jargon, and I thought, oh, why not? Why don't I change the world? You know, why don't I go back, back home and start MMA because it's not there. In, in at least in my city, it's not there. So that's sort of what uh, triggered it. And I was, I mean, I had a couple of. Uh, it was a not easy decision, obviously, because my parents didn't want me to quit, and then I also had a really good job offer on the on the table. There was a fashion brand called Mavi. Uh, they do jewelry, and I was going to be the COO. of that company and uh, all it was coming ho- coming back home and starting this so it was a very difficult decision but i'm glad i made that decision man i'm so glad i i enjoy going to work so that's so you of, basically uh, left out a big offer in the united kingdom to come yeah, here man, i did i did i did i did and it was uh, and that's that's the weird thing because had i stayed on for six more months i would have got my pr uh six more months so it was either okay should i hang on with this company for six more months uh, get my pr and then go back to india but i don't know what just something t- came over me man i was like i need to start now like now i need to start um because at the time i don't know man it's long time ago but they were there were plans for uh, evander holyfield at the time to set up gyms in india you know uh-huh. this is like really long time ago so i was reading stuff yeah. like that and i was thinking uh-huh. yeah i, I was th- I was thinking like man like I I'm going to be too late really. by the time I get there and Dana White in 2008 said that we are going to be in India next year so I'm like fuck I'm missing the bus like I am getting too late I'm wasting too much time here so that sort of hurried me into fuck I need to move back and it's a funny story that I've not told anyone but uh, and I'll show sh- share a photograph with you I was very confused uh, uh-huh. whether to come home or not and I was in the Bombay airport uh-huh. and I was just like almost talking to god god you know just give me a sign man should i come back to india should i stay in the uk and guess what i got i saw in the mumbai airport ben henderson from the ufc okay uh-huh. you know in a line struggling because he couldn't find his bags looking around asking people nobody knew who the hell he was and i was like fuck that ben henderson so i went straight up to him saying uh oh, uh oh, Hi Ben, uh, a great fan, huge fan. He was like, he was shocked. He was like, "Fuck, someone in India actually recognizes me." 
uh, and he was he was champion. So uh, so yeah, I was like, I got my sign straight away. And the first thing I realized was when I was speaking to him, I'm like, he's not that big. Like he's he's my size. Like <laughs> I think I could wrestle with him. So so yeah, that's sort of it's a funny story that you know I was figuring out what to do with uh, life, and I wanted a sign. And uh, there I saw Ben Henderson at the airport, and I spoke to him. So it was awesome. Like what are the chances? Like what are the chances of uh, Ben Henderson being in the Mumbai airport? If I'm <laughs> crazy. So apparently UFC had done a s- small press conference huh, yes, back yes, exactly. when when, mm-hmm. and he had come for that. And that's the same night he was flying out where I was flying out as well. So it was just man. Like, can you imagine? Like, can you imagine? And nobody at the airport knew who the hell he was. That was the funniest. So I said, you know, can I can we take a photograph? So I actually have a photograph from that night. Once I took a photograph, five other people just randomly went to him, photograph, photograph, and then after they took, took photographs, they came and asked me, "Who is this guy?" I was like, "He's a UFC <laughs> fighter." I'm like, and they're like, "I don't know what the hell that is." I said, "It's combat sports. He's the best in the world." The people were randomly taking photographs. They saw me take a photograph, and they thought, "Let it him." We figured out who he is later. So, well, uh, do you ever think back, like whether you have say, said six more months there in UK, this whole Thing would not have been there. Crossrain would not have been there. Yeah, man. It yeah, would be an entirely different scene. The fighters yeah. from Crossrain will not be here. So, have you ever thought like that? I don't think about it too much, to be honest. Uh, but there's a movie called Sliding Doors. It's a mm-hmm. Gwyneth Paltrow movie, and it's it tells you like, so it shows this girl going into a train, and it shows her life goes in a in a different manner, and then they go rewind back halfway through the movie. and she misses the train and when she misses the train they show how her life totally changes so there are two different things that could have happened so i think in a parallel universe you know i would be in the uk still working you know so i i don't think about it too much uh, but yeah some days when life shitty and uh, you know things are not going well you you not rolled well you got smashed in training and uh, some student is creating a ruckus in the gym or is just one of those bad days you think about why am i doing this you know i could be in the uk i could have a job and i could be you know settled and all that so some some days you think about that on the bad days but generally i don't think about those things okay so now you came back to delhi you have a plan yeah. you need to start a gym what are the first yeah. step that you took my my first thing why well, actually like i said uh, i had a job of for on on the table and uh, even like a year before that i created a facebook page called uh, mma bjj boxing india i think it's still around because there was nothing bro like at that time there was nothing so i just randomly created this post and i started sharing like ronda rousey photographs gina carano not ronda rousey gina carano photographs and this and, and man is trying to get likes and followers and i think even and i haven't posted in it for like 10 years now but that page has close to 15000 uh, uh, followers that's when facebook was on live so i was just testing the market to see you know whether people are into mma or not and uh, and yeah i mean that's how i that was a market research to see whether there is any appetite in india and people do do they know it or not so 6 to 8 months before i came back i did that research and when i landed i had a full concrete Need business plan. I had a full five-year plan because that's what I did my previous job. You know, I was uh, managing international business for my brand, so I knew everything how to forecast and plan, and everything was on in in paper. Website had been ready for a year before we launched, uh, and then I came in, and within a week, I realized, fuck, nothing. None of that works in India, man. None of those business plans are going to work. It's it's a whole different ball game. It's not as you can't just put it on paper and ex- expect it to be executed. Yeah. uh it's so difficult man people it's not and especially in in our bed, like in north india like delhi it's so difficult man there's there's this x factor of people you know people you can't you know <laughs> you can't predict what they're going to do so we, i lost two deposits on my first gym i had found places i gave them a deposit and the brokers just vanished here yeah? so the bro- broker took <laughs> the money he vanished and then uh, in one the the landlord refused refused us to take the place because again they didn't know what mma was at the time then the guy found out what it was and he didn't want to do anything with it uh, so eventually our first place was in a warehouse it was first floor of a warehouse 
that's where the first center was of cross train in 2012 because i think again the landlord didn't know what it was so he just said la theek hai so we were in a uh, non legalized non authorized place that was the first center that came up this is in delhi right delhi yeah 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 yes so you set up this but uh, it's in, it's back in 2012 so mma obviously people don't know so how did you market this like Nobody how did knows. people start coming in nobody knew man i mean mma nobody knew uh, ufc nobody knew um, it was really hard that was the big most the, the biggest challenge and i wanted to do uh, bjj and wrestling and all of that but people didn't know what it was and they didn't want to do it also so initially it was first year i think was just kickboxing that's how we sold it kickboxing i had a couple of so i had tied up with a lot of fighters so everybody in delhi who was training who had fought for sfl or something we had invited them over i had reached out to so there was a sh- reality show that sfl had done uh, yes. uh, on this channel yes. called neo prime yeah so i had got in touch with all of them and thankfully a lot of them were already from delhi a lot of the fighters rajender singh meena uh, that is sandeep yadav priya uh, you know all those guys who are from uh, from delhi so when I, re- i came i reached out to all of them i called all of them and and when they came and they actually saw a proper mma facility they brought people with them you know because all of them had people who wanted to train and a lot of their students came and they actually found a, you know a decent place and that's sort of how we started but again they didn't want to do bjj or wrestling they wanted to just do boxing or kickboxing so for a year and a half we just had to push Uh, so jiu-jitsu was my personal love like i love doing it uh, but nobody else wanted to do uh, grappling at all uh, so yeah it was it was a challenge but that's how we went about we got in touch with fighters fighters brought two or three of their own students um, so our morning classes rajender singh meena would take uh, and sandeep yadav we had jason come in a few times we had ricky ranjit singh who used to be a fighter in sfl he he came in with his students kaushik uh joy sen again and civil fighters yeah all of, yeah all of those guys came to cross train man they all came they all trained and uh, that's sort of how we got the ball rolling initially because there was no one else man nobody knew what it was so at least the fighters were fighting at least they know what it is and they bring whatever three or four students they have they bring in bring them in that's how we started so do you have any anyone from that time period still with you like still in the club at this moment uh well i'm still friends with almost all of them and mm-hmm. every time they need any help i'm there in fact when rajender fought his first 1 fc fight i went to yeah. corner him you know so even though he didn't train that much you know he, he taught but he didn't tra- he learn any ground like he came for five classes didn't like it but i'm on good terms with all of them uh, unfortunately a lot of those guys are not training anymore you know a lot of the people have moved on uh priya i think is the priya sharma is the catcher sure. i think she, she's the only yeah. one who's still uh from that batch who's still training hard uh yeah. and yeah i mean she she was working for one of my centers uh a year and a half ago in delhi uh, then she moved to chetanya's gym in Mom- bombay but before that she was she was in delhi so so yeah i mean all of them if they're still training they come to cross in the the train in delhi so when this uh, when did this pick up like after this particular phase the fighters i don't phase? know i don't know <laughs> we still picked up bro i still don't know i still don't know we picked up so i don't know it was just uh, you know the approach the approach changed man after you know the first year i think we did a good job in terms of our training and teaching but people weren't sticking on man because again if they train for 3 months 6 months then where do they go there were no tournaments then 2013 there was no tournament man 2014 there nothing 2015 is the first time i am organize something you know before that they were just like in someone's house on someone's backyard you know, there was no tournament so there was nothing to look forward to so i used that time between 2014 to 2016 to build our team you know so a lot of the seniors that i have now they started that time so it was not so much about competition it was more about making them fall in love with the sport you know of sport of mixed martial arts sport of jiu jitsu uh, so actually some of my guys so, so tarun yadav who's who's uh, who's a purple belt now man he didn't know what mma was he didn't care what the ufc was he just came in for a class he got totally gassed out and he was like fuck this is awesome what is this i said just start training i'll i'll teach you in in due course and that's how he got into it 
Rachit, uh, who's like badass grappler. Again, he didn't know what UFC was. He didn't give a shit. He didn't know who fucking Frank Mir was. He didn't care. He, he liked rolling and choking people out. And that sort of it started. You know, people fell in love with the sport. And later they, they realized, oh, actually, it's on TV and it's a big thing. So that's, I, I use those years, those dark, those dark days to uh, actually build my team. So when, when MMA became a little bigger, you know, we already had a talent pool, a homegrown talent pool. And, uh, and these guys would shine because they were the, almost the pioneers as competitors. So interesting that you brought up that Tarun gassing out story. Anshul also had a similar story in his first thing. So <laughs> this is how you stick people on like gassing them out in their first class. <laughs> I didn't do it. Bro. So I, honestly, Anshul's first class, I remember it because I wasn't doing it. Uh, I, I had some meeting. I came in. The class had already started. So yeah, so Anshul's first class, like I said, I wasn't actually there for the class initially. I came in a bit late and I came and I was just sitting on the corner just watching the class. And a couple of guys came to me and said, oh, this some new guy has come. And he's he's saying he's never trained before, but he's definitely trained somewhere. And because we get that all the time. We get people who've trained for years and they'll come and say, we've never trained before. The sandbagging is what we call it. So I'm like, who's this guy? So they show me and Anshul is there. He's wearing a white rash guard, little fat. Uh, but he's got mount. He's got mount and one of my students. I'm like, oh, damn. Like, so I thought for sure he's trained before. Punyajit came to me, you know, Punya. Punya is like, coach, this, this fucking guy is lying. He's trained somewhere before. You know, he took a couple of names. Punya, I think he's trained here or he's trained there for <laughs> sure. I'm like, really? Okay. So he rolled pretty well. I saw him roll. And then after the class, uh, I asked him, I said, where have you trained before? He said, no, first class. I said, what? What? First class? He said, yeah, yeah first class. I'm like, fuck, that's insane. He had, he had trained some striking in Dehradun, but he had been self trained man. And, and by the time, he was already 12 and 0 in his amateur career. He was knocking people out. He was just brawling with them and finishing them. Uh, and he had, he had zero jiu never done it before. So I was like, fuck, this guy is, he's talented. And then from next week onwards, I started getting him to do our wrestling classes. And like, like Punya Jeet had really explosive, uh, really explosive takedowns. But man, Anshul's takedowns within a month became better. And we couldn't believe it. We're like, okay, naturally he's he's getting jiu jitsu. Naturally he's picking up wrestling, striking. We are working on him, so this guy is going to be a force. But we didn't think in a year he'd be making his pro debut and uh, beating fucking big names, man. So, but but yeah, he's he's putting in a lot of hard work. Yeah, he trains every single day, and he's so dedicated. And uh, so like like the famous saying is, you know, that uh, talent is only talent, you know. But if it doesn't work hard means nothing mm -hmm. but so he's talented but he works really hard man okay so so it's been like eight years now 2012 you started and a lot of fighters have come to like anshul tarin you mentioned uh what were some of the best memories that you had like over these eight years wow in terms of yeah that's very uh i'm i, so I don't <laughs> really i don't really think like like, like i said I don't really celebrate these things, man. I don't even celebrate my birthday. I don't celebrate my birthday. You'll never see me post, oh, happy birthday to cross train. It's our anniversary. Mm -hmm. I know when it is. My students know when it is. And they're telling me, post something, do something. I don't give a shit. Man. It's in the past, yeah. It's happened. So I'm, I don't really think about it. I really want, though, honestly, is what will make me really happy is to see one of these guys go on the world stage and become a world champion, man. That's something that I really, you know, I want... Anshul, Tarun, Rachet, you know, Punyajit. I would want to see these guys, you know, even Roshan. Roshan is in one FC now. I mean, he trained with us for about a year and a half. And I, I really hope that, you know, even though he's not my student now, but I really like, if one of those guys can go and win a world championship for India, man, that's going to be like the happiness. I would be the happiest to see that happen. I'll have to take you uh, to one moment, actually. I remember you doing a seminar in Bhutan. Uh, I think I we you did it like 2018 or 19. Yeah. Uh, so what was the whole thing about? Because it was a huge thing, if I'm right. Yeah. So with Bhutan, it was uh, one of my common friends. He introduced me to the faculty of the school, and uh, they wanted to try a sport, uh, not your conventional football, hockey, because they already had all of that. They wanted to try a martial arts slash sport which would help people 
in uh, multiple facets of life you know and uh, when we spoke to them you know they asked about jitsu and i and i told them that you know jitsu is it's only like physical bit of it is only one small aspect you know of jitsu jitsu is very you got to think a lot it's a very cerebral sport you know you know number of techniques and combinations and all of that and then apart from that it's it's there is something to it there's something about uh, meditative uh, spirit of it there's something spiritual in there i can't really explain it because i'm not a professional psychic or a yogi or a meditator or a healer but i know for a fact that the day we train really hard man we feel so nice about it, uh, each, each other you know there's so much of love and camaraderie and and we care for each other like i like if i'm rolling with some of my students man they are dangerous guys yaar i mean I, in india I, the hardest guys have to i've rolled with in competition also other cross train guys because when they all killers but there is and they'll try and kill you in the roll for sure they try and kill me all every day but once the roll is over there is something so therapeutic about it like you feel so nice and almost it's an out of world experience so when these uh, faculty members of the school they asked me you know um, do you want to do this or tell us more about it i said man it helps in a number of ways the team building aspect there is cerebral aspect there is physical aspect there is emotional aspect there so many things you can benefit from and then they loved it they loved the idea of trying something like that so that's when i went and taught our seminar and they uh, absolutely fell in love with you know the sport the kids loved it man the kids were so receptive to the idea of of trying something like that and uh, it was a really great experience man just to teach the kids and and i honestly i can say it the kids i'm so used to teaching kids at cross train who don't listen to you at all compared to kids in bhutan where they were they were like 100 kids and i would say okay everyone line up and boom lined up if you are going to the old stand here stand there, no they line up quick okay everyone this is a this is how you do a technique this is how you do a break fall and boom they're doing it they don't care so for me it was amazing it was such a easy seminar to teach because the kids were so nice that's sort of how it came about okay so this was the first ever bjj seminar in bhutan in bhutan yeah there, there, there was no bjj in bhutan uh, they had judo and they had boxing but uh, no bjj whatsoever okay 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 so coming back to cross train i mean what's the story behind the behind the name like do you simply is there any story behind the name of cross train or Did you yeah, man, man. there is a there is a long story here. Where the I'll cut it down, down really short. Uh-huh. The story was I wanted to call it uh, uh, Lions Den, okay? Because uh, you know can, MMA. Can you repeat that? I think I think the most broke ones. Can you repeat? Because it's it's something interesting. I, uh-huh. I wanted to call it uh, Lions Den Academy uh-huh. after Ken Shamrock's original gym, which is Lions uh-huh. Den. I was like, oh fuck! What a name, brutal name. Like it's hardcore. Like you know, there's gonna be blood and guts in the gym. But then I spoke to my friend, and he said, listen, bro, you're starting MMA in a country where they are anyway scared of martial on of fighting. Then you're calling your academy Lions Den. Man, no one's gonna come. No one send the kids to a place called Lions. So uh, who are you really looking forward to? So, so then they said, okay, come up with a name where you know. it's sort of fitness you know sort of fitness but martial arts as well so that's why i thought i thought okay let's call it cross train because it's like fitness you know and it's cross training because you're doing different different martial arts so it was fitting on a number of different uh, levels and again fight club is again something i thought a long lot about because there were no fight clubs bro you can go back and research we were the first gym in india to call ourselves a fight club uh because of being just damn scary or people didn't want to go to a fight club they thought it's that movie uh, uh you know it's that that <laughs> movie that we're going to beat up people so uh, there was a lot of apprehension so i said okay i'm keeping fight club because i like the way it sounds but the first name cross train i'll make it very generic and fitness so people are not too scared you know so that's how cross train was you know someone else's input that keep it like little fitness and fight club was my take on it so that's how it became cross train fight club you know so both mixing both both words so it was supposed to be named lions den interesting lions den <laughs> or something along those lines lion or tiger or killer something like that for sure bro it was not going to be cross train like but i probably i can't think of calling academy anything but cross train now uh but then it was i was going to yeah there's going to be something like that 
that so so what are the major cha- challenges that you have faced like over this time what what are the major challenges that you have faced awareness was the number one uh, you know initially when we started awareness was the biggest one uh, people didn't know what it was the next one and i think it's it's prevalent with all mma academies it's to uh, find people who want to train and also can afford to train a lot of people want to become fighters a lot of kids because again if you think about it for for someone to become a mma fighter they've got to be young you got to be you know start training at 18 19 20 something like that but in our society what are we doing when we are 18 19 20 we are in college and when are we the poorest in our life when we are in college because we have no money <laughs> and we are so dependent on our parents to fund us and parents are barely funding us for college so that's the that's the biggest challenge you know to balance kids coming in who who want to train uh but they can't necessarily afford to train so over you know since we started off at least in the first 4 to 5 years half of our gym was people training for free you know because they just couldn't afford to pay they couldn't and it's not their fault it's just nobody would understand what mma is nobody wanted to uh, support them so i had to do it and I, i thought in the long term you know they would make something out, out of themselves and blah 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 but then they didn't they just uh, once they became uh, decent they left they left either they stopped training or they took a different job or, because again opportunities weren't there so they stopped training so but yeah that was a, that was the biggest challenge i think still is that people don't people who want to train hard they don't have the resources to pay and again as a academy owners we can't get everyone to train for free you know because we have to pay rents we have to pay so i was telling one of my, my friends uh, yesterday i was like you have to pay 5000 rupees a month to train he said yeah mm-hmm. and i said that's expensive he said yeah that's expensive i said i have to pay a lakh and a half rupees to train because the academy i mean me running the academy i have to pay rent and if no one turns up i still have to pay that amount yeah. so your 5000 if you think is a lot i'm paying a lakh and a half and everything else like i'm leaving my job and everything so and i re- i really hope that you know uh, someone supports these guys who are coming in for training you know they get some financial support so they can then pay the academy owners and uh, academy owners can survive because it's very hard man it's very hard in india to survive with combat sports because people don't have the money to pay okay you franchised also like in between you you opened up uh, multiple so what was the idea behind that yeah. it was a natural uh, natural progression uh we had a lot of students and after a while you know like i kick up to the same thing after a while not everyone can afford the training so i'll give an example um we had this one guy who was coming in for training pretty much day in day out i had made his training free but after two or three years okay training is free but what about his life like what would how would he sustain his livelihood you know he had old parents so then he i had to do something for him so i helped him open an academy uh, cross an academy uh, and that's sort of how he started to get his uh, regular income through mma uh, and that's been the so so franchising for prostrain so far has not really been franchise as you would expect it you know for out of mcdonalds or dominos is really been my students who cannot afford to train anymore they would have only two options either they leave and take a normal job or i help them set up with a cross train somewhere where they can start making a livelihood out of training and living so that's how it was more of me trying to make sure that they have you know a source of income uh, and they stay in the sport and i don't lose them as a training partner and as a friend so that's how how sort of our franchising started so it's everyone who's running a cross train franchise is has been my student okay okay cool so uh, if we come back to the present like you currently have one of the top five teams right now so we know a few names like uh, tarun rachit everyone everyone put uh, claim gold in the adcc anshul is obviously making name punyajit is also there so are there any other names that we should watch out for like that are lesser known that you need to uh, like you think should be out there bro there are two guys man there's uh, there's a guy called rajiv jha uh we call him yeah. hod uh rajiv jha is man he's he's got a really good amateur record he's uh, i think he's won pretty much every every fight he's been in uh again he won adcc as well he won the intermediate category i think he's a guy 
who's who's the future for sure like he's I mean, if i had to bet bet money on a guy i'm going to bet on uh, rajiv jha uh, we call him hod head of department because he's like a he's like head of department you know he's telling people pay your fees do this do this but yeah he's 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 one guy and the second guy is shashikant singh um, you know so shashikant uh, singh he got a chance he he got a chance to uh, fight in the mfn amateur MFN, card MFN, yeah yes. yeah but that man that was that was uh, i was very disappointed with that fight mainly my fault because we had four guys fighting on that card and he was the only one on the undercard and i really did not give him much attention in that camp because i was so focused on anshul and uh, gorav and all those guys i totally forgot about uh, sk he didn't get the training he needed and also we didn't know when he's going to fight so so they had three amateur cards three amateur fights they didn't tell us the order we thought his fight is going to be third it ended up being first so he didn't warm up for it so but yeah, i really think that he uh, if he gets a proper training camp and he's knows when is he fighting he's going to be a absolute uh, savage so shashikant singh uh, sk as we call him and uh, hd are the two guys i really think are the future man i really but they're light guys so they'll probably fight minus 60 minus 55 something like that okay good so before we close with the cross training thing i just wanted to shoot a couple of questions at you like one question sure. possibly Uh, sure. So, what do you think of the current state of grappling and MMA in India? Because I think I already have shared some questions with you regarding that whole belt system thing. So, uh, can you put oh. some like, your opinion on the whole, whole thing? Yeah, I think the sport will grow by itself. I don't think we need uh, grading and belt system to grow it. Uh, the only see, it's a very difficult, tricky question to delve into. Uh, you know okay i'll talk about jiu-jitsu in jiu-jitsu you are given your uh, belt by a black belt a black belt promotes you to you know your brown belt a brown belt then promotes someone purple belt so on and so forth and these black belts have been around forever you know to get a black belt takes you 10 years you know 10 years of black belt they compete also they do a lot of work now with mma who's going to be grading the black belts who's going who's going to be giving the black belts you know jiu-jitsu everything everything goes back to uh Elio Gracie, you know, Helio, big Gracie family, pretty much. You know, Elio Gracie or Carlson Gracie, the two sides of the family. So whoever is a black belt today, it all started off from that family. Okay, now in MMA there is no such thing. There is no one person or no family that started it. So now randomly, I can't start giving someone black belt in MMA because I myself am not a black belt in MMA. So who's gonna give me a black belt? Some will John if. John, John Jones gives me a black belt in MMA. I'm like, okay, it's legit. You know, it's someone who's fought. He's a world champion. He's the best in the world. If he wants to start his uh, grading, I'm all all for it. But someone else, I mean, who's not a professional fighter, someone who's who's not the best in the world. He's no Elio Gracie. You know, who's giving the belt? You know, how how can I give you a belt in something which I myself am not not a black belt in? You know, so then it just it's just wrong, man. It's not it's not right. And uh, and i think it should be something that we get it away with you know i'm and why do we need belts in mma you know why you know give them belts in jiu jitsu what's wrong with getting belts in jiu jitsu or in muay thai why can't you get your group grading this this crew grading in muay thai you know so get that grading if you if you really want grading do those it's fine like you like boxing doesn't have grading nobody ever says take a black belt in boxing there's no grading in wrestling no one says take a black belt in then why does mma need to have belt system it's not it is not a it's not a martial art where you wear a belt anyway so the only belt you wear is a championship belt so and if you have a championship belt no one's going to say what belt do you have otherwise they're going to know you have a championship belt and so what's your take on the mma scene currently like in india like you've been around for like from the start itself so what's your take on the thing currently it's growing man it's growing and i'm i'm so happy it's growing um the the and and i think the only only challenge like i say like as the sport grows more and more you know fighters coming in or students coming in i just hope that somebody comes through any it helps these guys you know maybe sponsors come on board that help support these fighters now because these fighters who are starting off now you know people like anshul and punyajit these guys in 5 years you know 5 years 6 years 7 years they could be at the real you know high level of international mma 
they could be at one or or ufc or whatever so this is the time for sponsors to you know come and help these guys out and if you help them out then the academies get helped you know then you know the academies can then sponsor younger fighters like a lot of our, like i said to you like half of our gym at one point was sponsored so if we can sponsor fighters if we get some sort of support you know uh, from even the professional fighters getting sponsored then we don't have to worry about it so much so i'm happy the way the sport is growing like i'm happy grappling is growing so much we are close to 300 fighters in adcc uh, you know mfn is growing strength through strength uh, so the sport is growing people are watching ufc a lot more uh, and i see a lot more key- keyboard warriors on uh, on a lot of platforms which is always a sign that casuals are watching you know casuals are who have an opinion that fuck you know had i been conor mcgregor then i wouldn't have tapped you know so there's people like that so it's good to see that because the, the masses are now getting into it so i'm happy it's growing but i really hope that uh, someone somebody supports it like the government or some national body comes on that's a legit body that's actually f- looking out for the benefit of the fighters and the and the gyms then that will really help us okay so lastly like uh what do you see the future for like what does the future hold for cross train fighting yeah good question man uh see i look at i really look at it from the long term uh, perspective you know i've never i never started cross train to make a quick buck because if i had to make money i would not be doing this to be honest at the same time i want to still survive i don't want to be hand to mouth you know i should not be like fuck man i've worked so hard this month i don't know where the next meal is coming from you know but at the same time my focus has always been like i said to you is training you know i want to get to the mats i want to train i want to learn and i know for a fact that if i am on the mats and if i am training then someone is training with me and as long as there's one more one more person on the mats training with me crossing is alive and well so long term is 10 years 15 years from now i'm still on the mat i'm still training and i'm hoping that the people training with me a lot more than they are now so we we'll, like like i said nothing with what we do is going to change we will constantly strive to become better as a as a academy as a gym uh, we are going to what we really want to do is uh, help a lot more in terms of our uh, social activity so i really want a lot more ngos to work with us you know we've done a lot of self defense workshops and stuff but i think we haven't reached out and this meeting critical of ourselves we haven't reached out enough to uh, orphanages you know where i i've done one workshop at an orphanage you know all girls i really think we can do a lot more you know but i can't do it personally but i think my team really has to reach out we have to do more uh, more of these initiatives you know there's a lot going on in the world that we can help with we as martial artists i think we need to really pull our socks up and make more of a contribution to society because our perception is that we are just uh, Uh, gundas here they they all just think that mma <laughs> fighters you know they fighters and they fight but the reality is the nicest people uh, some of the nicest people i met in life are martial artists so i think we need to just training is fun but let's go help out some other people also here people need it and then also so sit thanks again like for coming on to this series that we are trying to do so before we close anything that you want to add like anything like about the fighters club everything nothing i i i want to mention you because uh, honestly man you've done such a exceptional job i i can not uh, stress enough uh, once initially when i saw your page i was like bam finally someone is someone's on it and uh, you were covering all the right stories making all the right noise and then some, some idiot tried to screw you over i don't know who that was but i fucking if you find him i'm sure you'll choke him out but somebody tried to screw you over but honestly i'm i'm so happy that we are in a in a community where people like you exist who give a platform to all the right fighters and to all the coaches and academies uh, so it, honestly from me and from everyone costing we are really thankful that you're in our industry and you gave us a voice where nobody else does so i really appreciate it and just wanted to thank you and uh, thank you for the opportunity being on this platform man thanks a lot man like the words mean means a lot to us